Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. I hope everyone is having a wonderful day. Before starting the video, please go ahead and hit the subscribe button and give this video a thumbs up. You know how in the airplane, Mike got the extensions. Tummy Beats and son Mike are hunting for the next big haul. We can guarantee you that you've never heard of a rear. Rich's story is quite as picturesque as Tony Beats, while he's no Cinderella with his affinity for being censored in every episode of Gold Rush. His humble origins of farming in the Netherlands to striking gold are quite literally in Canada. They're the kind that inspire young minds all over the world, from a dairy farmer to an owner with a net worth of $24 million as of 2024. Tommy is a serious example of making your own way in the world. It is after all his continuous dedication to his craft and his commitment to being successful that has placed him where he is today. He and his family enjoy all kinds of material and financial comforts he wasn't privy to in his childhood, all while he effortlessly protects the legacy he is sure to leave in this world. Join us as we take a look at the luxurious lifestyle of Tony Beat primarily using it for the Ripper. Yeah, pretty much in the spring we'll strip it, but mostly it is the ripping part that we are interested in. Basically, what it does is we rip, and then it will push up to the 950 born Toulouse and mag beads. Tony was raised in the Netherlands. His family then relocated to Burgart, the countryside, only a few years later, which was the ideal spot for farming and agriculture. So much of Tummy's early life was spent working on a farm in the Netherlands, especially after his dad was involved in an accident that left him unable to tend to the farm. The responsibility then of running the farm and being a breadwinner fell on Tony, their only son. Years later, Tony was able to find gratitude in the memory, claiming that it was a seminal event in his life that allowed him to possess the leadership qualities that he does now. To cut a long story short, he eventually moved to Canada with his longtime girlfriend at the time and now wife Minnie, in search of greener pastures, choosing to settle on a farm in Salmon Arm, British Columbia. Tony initially made a living by milking cows. Despite the intensive labor employed, it was evident that he needed a more lucrative job to help them stay afloat. Eventually, in the year 1984, Tony was introduced to the life of mining, and this came with another relocation for the farmer, T. Miner Minnie, and him moving to Dawson City in the Yukon Territory to support his job as a miner. But unfortunately, the beginning of his career as a scavenger was not nearly as fruitful as they'd hoped it to be from a humble farmer trying to make meat. Tony was now a humble scavenger trying to do the same. Eventually, he found 3,000. 600 ounces of gold in Eureka Creek in just 2018 in the decade that led up to this, like any honest man on a wage. Tony climbed up the ladder and was eventually in a strong position to manage Paradise Hill Claim, where he has thus far leased land for newcomers. This in itself speaks to Tony's persistence and attraction to the treasure-hunting lifestyle in an interview with Entrepreneur he explained that it was the scavenging treasure hunting hunting lifestyle that he enjoyed they get to do whatever they want according to him, including yelling at whomever they choose, or while participating in a hunt for treasure. When put that way, it's not hard to see the appeal in 1994 Tony. Also established his owner mining company, Tamarack Gold Resources, Incorporated, which now owns multiple mines in Dorson, Perth and Sudbury. It was the establishment of this company that directly led him on a path to fame long before Tommy had the luxury of possessing a net worth of 25 million or mines to his name. He was just a regular guy managing his mining company in 2011. After he had proven to many that he had sufficient skin in the game, he was invited to participate in the second season of Gold Rush, the Discovery Channel show about gold mining. The show has had many cast members on and off, but Tony was an immediate hit with his loud personality and clear competence in his craft. He's actively involved in every single process in his company and knows each operation and its details down to the bone. As such, 
when advised by Todd Hoffman on his secret to gold mining, his popularity compelled the network to invite him back in their fourth season for a longer duration. Since then, his venture has become more of a family-involved event, and his wife Minnie and three kids, Monica Beats, Bianca Beats, Kevin Beats, and Mike Beats, often accompany him at social events and activities. Now a near-permanent fixture on Gold Rush, Beats enjoys a comfortable life with his family, and while his journey hasn't been free of controversy and tragedy, it has allowed him and his family comforts many only dream of despite Gold Rush being the spark the fan of his success. It was not the only way through which the reality star earns his millions. In fact, he was pretty successful running the Tamara Gold Mines, enough to loan and lease land to other people on the show with him. A vast majority of his net worth is made up of the money he makes as a full-time miner, and Tamara is now considered one of the biggest miners in the Klondike to date, beating his mind with a total of 1,626 ohms of gold, easily worth $28.9 million. There's no doubt of his popularity, as is reflected by his overflowing bank accounts. He's one of the most well-liked and easily the wealthiest Gold Rush stars to date. According to some sources, regular cast members make anywhere from $10,000 to $25,000 per episode, and since Tony's in high demand, it isn't a stretch to assume he probably pulls the latter. If we calculate how much he's earned so far in the series using these numbers, it comes out to about 4.5 million us from around one. 181 episodes he's been in so far, and this does not include the money he's made from the show's spin-offs Winter's Fortune, Pay Dirt, White Water, etc., and they've all been instrumental in allowing him to cultivate the wealth he now possesses. Tony's humble origins might have left a lasting impact on him because, despite being very able to afford a lineup of real estate investments, Tony and his family own at most two homes. They're currently known to live at a new Paradise Hill house funded and built by him after having to leave their Indian River operation. The house is described by fans as one belonging to humble millionaires and is situated 30 miles north of the whole Paradise Hill area with incredible views from its wooden balcony. The state-of-the-art home is perfect for the family of six with modern interior, detailing that accurately reflects his non-nonsense attitude in the house. Tony claims his favorite thing is the toilet seats, while Minnie's is the reclining chair in the spacious living room, even though it's evident that the millionaire spent no expense in making their house the most comfortable it can be. Tony went ahead and proved that whenever it comes to owning property, money is never an issue for him. He bought a large dredge located on Clear Creek for $1 million in Season 5 of Gold Rush to have it up and running at his new location to break it down. His own house is worth approximately $1 million, and his Scribner Creek mining claim, a 1,000-acre gold claim, is worth approximately $2 million. Tommy also has a winter home in Arizona, where the family often retreats during the holiday. This property doesn't get much screen time because it's supposed to be a private retreat located in North Norford, Canada. The family lived up here until the Paradise Hill House was constructed as of 2024. Tony signed a contract with the Discovery Channel that paid him $175,000 per episode. The series allowed an in-depth look into his life and work, and while he seems like a humble family man, which he is in many ways, it would be silly to underestimate just how powerful his assets make him. According to the report, he holds about $800,000 in stock markets in derivatives alone, compared to his fellow cast members, who all have a net worth below $10 million at the moment. Tommy Beats enjoys a comfortable, if not an especially luxurious, life since owning a claim on mines is different from owning land outright. It cannot be said with complete certainty just how much land is possessed by the family, however, some report that Tony and Minnie bought stakes in a lot of mining land years ago when they were cheaper so their assets are very ample in amount, 
He's also reported to own 18 other land holdings across the United States and Canada, and in total his mines generate an annual profit of 3.59 million US, the whole of which he gets to keep as per the show agreement that said to keep his operation consistently and smoothly running Tony needs to spend just as much in state-of-the-art equipment, and it is assured that the total amount, if calculated, might easily amount to about $1.7 million US for all of his machinery and equipment in excavators, bulldozers, and trucks for mining. He spent about $5 million US alone so far, while Tony himself is a very non-nonsense kind of minor one who doesn't enjoy people poking into his business, unfortunately, the nature of his work does not allow him that kind of unadulterated privacy in 2018. He was charged with multiple hefty fines for polluting local water bodies with waste water. Funnily enough, the claims were more or less undisputable since the footage from Gold Rush validated these claims and proved that one of his miners had in fact poured gasoline into a pond and set it alight. The 2014 leaked video footage revealed that the miner, who was charged as SEP a fine of around $1,500, wanted to give one of their gold dredge machines a Viking baptism to change its luck. Tony uttered fingers crossed better hope it works as his crew led the fire, which blazed ferociously exciting the team present in the video. Someone saw the stunt on the Discovery Channel and reported the environmental violation to the Yukon's mining inspector. The result was Tony's company, Tamarack, Incorporated, and the crew members involved were all charged and fined. He admitted his wrongdoing later, claiming he should have been more mature, but we suppose it's a good thing that he's a millionaire because he was very easily able to pay off the $31,000 fine he was charged with brushing the whole incident off the way many others would not have been able to do more recently. He was forced to shut down multiple plans when his water permits were renewed, since water is integral to his field. Tony had no choice but to suffer through these developments. If they breached these terms, they would have faced fines of $20,000 per day of water usage. Despite all this, it's evident that Tony Beats's journey in the world of mining is far from over. Reports of him joining new projects emerge frequently, and there's no doubt that he's determined to leave a legacy inspiring future generations of miners with his unyielding work ethic and the indelible mark he has made on the Condic, a rich history. Thanks for watching this video. Please subscribe to our YouTube channel and stay with us.